Good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning. Welcome to Faithful Friday. Fridays at 7 a.m. where we give you seven minutes or more of encouragement and prayer. Um, wow, look where I'm at right now. These walls are getting empty, y'all. So I'm sitting on a, a stool. I have a really cute stool. Look how cute this stool is. It's kind of neat. Like, okay, so I'm sitting on this because literally about, maybe it's been almost a month, maybe, or a little less, I was, uh, my office chair, we sold it. I sold it and I sold my husband's office chair because we are on the move. So um, anyway, so uh, my office is getting bare uh, and I put this sign up here. I thought you could be able to read it, but you can't read it. But it says, let's be brave and kind and love more than less. And then I've got my calendar, but it's not even the right month because I'm starting to erase it. Anyway, so exciting, exciting stuff going on here for Women to Wear as we are going to hit the road and um, spread the gospel. I'm super excited about that through the spirit, heart, mind, and body for other women. My hus husband's doing his men to wears and expanding that. And so I'm um, super excited. So we'll have a couple more Faithful Fridays. I don't know, however God leads. And then we'll be on the road for a while. We're just taking about three month um, little hiatus, sabbatical, so to speak. And then in January, we'll be back with, uh, in, back in more full force. Um, but we're going to be on our website, women to wears .com. So women to wears .com. We're going to be doing everything off there. Um, we're going to be um, blogging and keeping track. You can keep track of our journey and what's going on with women to wears that way. Uh, we won't be on the media and uh, and uh, as far as Facebook goes and, and so forth. So you'll be checking us out there at womentowares.com and also for Spotify because we definitely will be podcasting. I really enjoy that too. So we're just going to take about three months or so and then uh, join you all in January of 2022. So we have the newsletter. If you haven't gotten it, please, please make sure that you send me an email so we can get you a copy of it. It's the last one. There's 31 issues of the newsletter. We started this March of uh, 2019. And uh, this has gone for 31 issues, and I'm super excited about it. Just on a mini break, um, and we can pick this up anytime again. It is, um, what you receive in this is everything to do with your spirit, heart, mind, and body. From an article that I write to um, workouts, recipes, um, you know, how to form a tribe, uh, prayer. We have prayer aware that prays a uh, team that prays. For um, anyone and everyone, if you want to have prayer requests, you can send them in to us and email us and uh, or send us a message. And um, just different things, cool things and factors. So we're going to put a pause on this, but you're more than welcome to have any back copies if you send us an email at women. Uh, it's going to be at womentowarriors.com. You can check out our email there or it's w2w at womentowarriors.com, which is our email. But um, anyway, so we can get you a copy of these, but we're going to start blogging. And so there's also a way on our Facebook page here temporarily until we're uh, out of here in uh, um, late October. But um, you can also, re uh, what is it called? Sign up for our blog, uh, and we will have a blogging um, on there. It'll be all on our page. So super, super cool. I'm super excited about how Women Warriors is moving, and it's because of all of you. You all have been praying for us, and we're so grateful and thankful for everyone we're commit committing or connected with and in community with. And uh, even if it's virtual, it's been really fabulous for many, many years. We've been on Facebook. I personally have been on Facebook for like 12 years. And uh, and so then we started Women to Wears back in 2017. I don't even know the date that I started it on Facebook here, actually. And so we're super excited that we're moving on to new adventures and new things. And so thanks for all your support and love. I feel it. Like, it's amazing. And we are a community, so I love you all. So anyway, um, so we're going to start with Faithful Friday, right? Because that's what you really came here for. Faithful Friday, where we fill up with faith. Um, every day we should be filling with faith. God should keep us filled with faith. So today I want to share with you some different things. So... Speaking about the journey that I was on, or am on, with my husband, um, the reason things are going there is because we're going to go on the road, like I said, for, um, you know, God showed me the, uh, three years or so, and I, I don't know, I don't know where it's going to go from there, it could be longer, it could be whatever, but, uh, so I'm going to go and write, and, um, and spread the gospel, like I said, so, and some of these things will change, like Faithful Friday could be on our website, and so, in, in our, as far as Mondays, we're going to still hopefully do all those things in the future, but... Right now, we're just on this uh, three-month sabbatical, and I'm going to write, like I said, and, and journey with my husband. Well, guess what? He quit his job about in June uh, because he was an engineer, and he has been an engineer for, well, actually, he's done a lot of different things, but he does this, um, he's an engineer by trade um, with welding and uh, material science engineer, and he um, quit his job because he has been most recently, I would say maybe 
well, he also works with robotics. So I don't know how many years he's been working with robotics. Um, but he's been working with robotics, and he feels like in his industry that the robots, well, they were. The robots are replacing people. And um, and he just got this really big conviction. And so over these years, these past couple of years, just give you a quick version of it, um, he's really transformed. And I say it, it's like the Saul to Paul thing that he's transformed. It's been really cool. And, um, and so he has this conviction that, wow, I can't, I'm working for man and, and I'm making these robots and, selling these, and these robots are replacing people in their jobs and all these things started convicting him. And we knew he was going to retire one day, obviously, but, but we didn't know it was going to be this soon. <laughs> but anyway, God laid this on his heart, men to warriors and, and this adventure, this fun venture of traveling and spreading the gospel. And so um, when I had prayed for that years ago, I mean, like, I don't know, four or five years ago and, and then just continued to. And then it, and I just told him I would like to do this, but it wasn't really anything I could burn into him with my uh, verbiage <laughs> because he had to discover this on his own. Because you know, ladies, when we decide to make a decision uh, f without our husband's e equality in that, it can really burn us and vice versa, we know that. But for us, we're speaking for us because we're women, but it can really burn us. So I had to pray that God would change his heart in this. I couldn't just be like, hey, let's go in the room. Because what if he quit then and he hated what we were doing and he hated everything, you know, and they ended up hating me. I don't know. But we weren't prepared for it. God had to prepare our hearts and minds and spirits for and our bodies for it. So, um, and so... So here we are, and so we're at this place, and he's like, I'm going to I'm gonna leave my job, but we prayed about it, and of course, I thought it was going to be like years from now, then I thought, okay, by the end of the year, babe, maybe that'd be good to quit, and then all of a sudden, he's like, so convicted that he's like, I, I need to do this, and I said, okay, go ahead, do it, just go send your resignation, and you can do this. Now, this wasn't obviously with much preparation, because God's preparing our hearts for this, little do we know how much so. Um, and so being out of debt was su super important for us. And that was our first goal is getting out of debt, any kind of debt with our house debt or car debt or, you know, glamping lifestyle debt, whatever. Um, and uh, so we did that. That was, That's really most important. So seeking God and then going into uh, getting out of financial debt. And so um, now we're just in the, in the hall of, 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 of selling everything. <laughs> so, um, and we got a lot to sell. I've had two yard sales two weeks in a row been wonderful, meaning lots and lots of routes, amazing people, amazing people. So that's been really cool about ministry because we need to be, I love people and my husband does too and we love spending time with people in community. So so here we are, he's left his job and it's been a couple of months now and now we are going to go travel and spread the gospel. So what I want to share with you today is, is that in this there's just a whole revelation that comes to me, okay? And, um, and it's kind of a play on words here because you as a warrior woman, I'm going to encourage you to armor up, okay? And armor up by reading the Bible is the is your is the sword of the spirit, okay? So it, it's the word, it's the sword, it's what you need to be infiltrating yourself with is God's word because the next three and a half years we're going to have a lot of tribulation. There's going to be a lot of things happening and havoc, um, and and things happening. So. I don't want to scare you, of course, because you don't need to be scared. Because if you're a warrior and you're and you believe who in our Father Jesus is, then you shouldn't be scared because you're going to face everything and rise, right? And that's what I'm going to do, and that's what y'all are going to do. But I just want to equip you today with just saying that this is going to get ugly before it gets bright and beautiful again, okay? But we are going to equip ourselves because we've been equipped, right? We are warriors, and if you haven't, then please get equipped. And the way to do that is with your amazing Bible. So. This is your Bible, right? This is my Bible, okay? It's super big because I have large print. Um, as I'm getting older, I thought, wow, I need to see these birds bigger. And I didn't have this one Bible. It's so tiny. And so it's a large print Bible, not like super large, like annoying large. It's, I don't know, it's maybe um, maybe um, 10, 11 font. I couldn't tell you. But anyway, super cool. But in the front of it, this is my armor, how my armor starts is my Bible cover case, okay? This is, it says, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist with a breastplate of righteousness in place and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one did you hear the part all yes take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of god ephesians 6 14 through 17 and we're going to go back to that because we're going to read that again but it's putting on the full armor of god and this is my full armor this is how i equip myself every 
day. I have to be in the word with God. And so what does that look like? Well, sometimes you're looking at this word and you're like, oh my gosh, I don't know what this means or what this says. So that's where you have to just open up your heart and just say, God, just show me. Show me what you need me to hear, see in something. Whether it's the word, whether it's lyrics in a song, whether it's something you're reading or through a person. I mean, there's angels all walking all over this earth and there's all kind. There's hey, there's the good and the evil angels just to give you a heads up on that. But, um, and so with that, uh, you, you know, here we are walking, walking around every day and somebody could be encouraging us and we don't even know it because we're living in a pessimistic moment, right? And so you can give encouragement and we can receive encouragement. That to me is like an angel, something that's going to give me encouragement as I'm maybe having a, not such a great day. Uh, and so everywhere we go. So we've got to stay equipped warriors. And so I wanted to share with you the fact that, you know, it just seems like for me, as far as in my time of prayer and so forth, what God's sharing with me and revealing to me is that the world's becoming very robotic. Um, and that's where I wanted to share with you is what my husband and what he was doing. It just seems like it's it's going into really, it, it is humans, that we're being replaced and made into these robotic people. And it's really interesting because I've always, I love to study food. I like to study food, the, the the um, and fitness those are my some of my very favorite passions and i like to get in and, and, and really discover things about like how food is made and and where it's sourced from and so forth like i can get really really nerdy in it and that's so important to me right and as far as that's how how i feel my body and how i take care of myself and and and, and as far as your spirit and your heart and your mind these are the ways you're going to equip yourself and this is the way we're going to do this with the word and by reading ephesians and by placing yourself even if you're just like okay i don't even know i don't know god i, do, I don't know okay so find a verse in the bible and just go with that and just ask god to show you something within that open it up and i'm going to ask you to start with ephesians 6 11. so please get your bibles because it's so important to stay equipped my, one of my best friends, if not my very best friend, Miss Jerry Nichols. Uh, she's my mama warrior, okay? She's a um, sweet 80-year-old woman. She is shorter than me, and I'm short. But don't, don't, that doesn't, shouldn't shock, shock you or stop you because she is the warrior. Like, she is fierce at that sweet little height of probably 4'11". Uh, and she's amazing. She's powerful. And because she's in the Word every day. So I got to have the pleasure of having dinner with her this week, her and her beau. And, um... Guess what? She carries her Bible with her everywhere she goes. And it is worn out, y'all, because that's because she's using it. And that's amazing. And so she, everywhere she goes, so she shows up at our dinner with the Bible. And the Bible's there at our dinner. You know what I mean? And then everywhere we go, it's everywhere I'm at. And she comes to my house to come out and hang out. All right, and here she was coming to our RV because we, we, still, we had a dinner at our RV. And so um, and so everywhere she goes, and this is what we need to do too, Where's and, and so it's, it's interesting because yesterday after, you know, the day after she left, it was two days ago we did this dinner I went to go pick up my Bible because usually it's just it's in I have several Bibles placed at different spots so I can just open it up there I picked this up this is like a workout I, I, I it's funny because I have the large print like I said and it is so much heavier and I'm like man if I mean Miss Jerry can carry her Bible I'm gonna start carrying my Bible and then I rip it up and I'm like whoa this is like working out because it is it's much heavier because look how thick that is and thanks Miss Barb Palmer for doing my little tabs thank you there i did get a new one i do want to suggest that making sure that your bible is very very uh equipped in the ways of that you can read beyond just what the scripture is okay i've discovered this most recently with my husband and um some some sisters in my tribes about how much more in depth you can get in the resources of reading the bible I used to do it digitally. I mean, I did it digitally for years. I get, I'm getting rid of all the digital things of the world, and I'm going to go into reading back to paper. I like paper, and it's going to be forever, right? And until somebody takes it and rips it on my arms. That's how I think of it. If you ever say to somebody, hey, what would, would be the one item you'd want if you were stuck on an island? It wouldn't even be toothpaste and a toothbrush. I would be my bubble because this is the living word and this is consistently, every time you read it, it's so new and engaging and incredible. And for me, it's like these amazing stories that have come to life and they speak life to me. And, and if you want to give even more life in it, get the series, The Chosen. That is like a powerful series. They've got two seasons that you can purchase and it's incredible. And it's the life story of Jesus. And as he's going up from 
um, before he's the, the miracle worker and he's living um, just as a human, right, and a man, and then he becomes in his journey of how he becomes, um, you know, g g gathering his disciples and how he, he's a teacher then at that point, right, and then he moves on. And I haven't seen the part where he's been uh, on the cross yet because I'm keep like going back and playing the other ones because I'm just not ready for that episode yet. Um, it's so powerful. It's so wonderful. But anyway, and so with that, uh, let's go to Ephesians 6.11 since I asked you to go there. And I know I read a little bit earlier, but we're going to go back to reading it. And it's going to say this, the armor of God. And I'm going to start with 10 because 10 is pretty powerful. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand, stand against the devil's schemes. Okay, because the devil has all kinds of schemes right now. He's working through all kinds of people. Wake up world wake up women wears he has infiltrated everything everywhere from your food source to your water source to everything i mean it's there's okay the we're, we're living upside down jesus clearly says this in the bible do i have that exact quote no or for scripture no but you can read that in there because that's what he says we're living in the world that's upside down so everything we should be looking at we should be looking at hmm is that the truth or is that false is that right upside up? Would that be what God said, what Jesus said? You know, like, just like the bracelet, what would Jesus do? Or maybe it's not. So guess what? You gotta challenge yourself with this because you are given a brain, the most incredible brain. You know, your head weighs 17 pounds. I told one of my personal, I personal trained, I told one of my clients that she couldn't believe it. And it's like, yes, you're, so, and it's holding an amazing brain inside there. I don't know how much the brain weighs. You can look it up yourself. Um, but it's an amazing brain and God created this amazing machine in you. You are powerful and you're aware, but you can't be those things if you're not in the shape that you need to be mentally and physically and spiritually and and in your heart and for our heart it's serving are you giving out are you giving yourself away are you serving others you always just like give me give me give me give me well if you're in the gimme's it's about me myself and i that's who you made your trinity to be no god is the full trinity the father the son and the holy spirit and the way you're going to honor him is by getting in the word so let's go back to it for our struggle is not against flesh and blood but against the rulers against the authorities against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Oh, there's all kinds of evil, political evil, um, uh, evil in the food systems. I mean, it's terrible. There's so many things I know you don't know and I might, I, I might be shaking you up a little bit right now. Well, that's okay because we need to be waking up, shaking up so that we can wake up. All right, so um, warriors, you got you got to get you got to deep. You got to be looking through everything. I mean, you really do. And are you tired? Okay, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. We'll get back up because you can't be tired. There's no time for tired. We are in a battle and a war, and this is an equipment for you, warriors, to get in here and read Ephesians six eleven and equip yourself with what we need to do. Armor up. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, oh, it's here. It's here. Every day it feels like that, right? You got you got the days where there's people that are just snapping at you. I mean, you know, or, or just, you know, they're not good. Like my husband, he's not a good morning person. He's like, I don't know, this, this cartoon um, back in the day was called Garfield of the, Cat, the Cat. I think it's still out there. And he was like, I hate Mondays. And this is my husband. I hate mornings. And I just, it's just something he's just been, he wakes up in pain and he's just miserable. And I'm just like, please don't talk to me until you're in a really good mood because I wake up and I'm like, ding, you know, the sun shines in my head and I'm like ready to go and I'm ready to fierce and I fight for the, for the, for the, with the world. But, um, that, and so everybody's different. I know that, but this is the day of evil. And so we got to remember, remind ourselves to love, love, love and be kind, kind, kind exactly what i read you a moment ago okay let's read it again let's be brave warriors that's one of our words bold brave and beautiful and kind and love more than less so when the day of the evil comes you may be able to stand your ground yes you may Okay, that's questionable because are you going to be able to stand your ground? Where are you at? Are you equipped right now? If you're not, get equipped in everything. I was talking to a lady at our local meat market and um, and she had stopped me because um, I was in there and I was in my workout clothes and she's like, oh, you work out, you know, and all this. And I said, yeah, I'm a trainer. And she said, oh my gosh. And that's when they really just share their heart with you about, you know, their struggles, people's struggles, of body struggles or mind struggles, you know, and, and, and so I also help life coach. And so I was just sharing with her some different things of what could encourage her. And one of the ways was I said, start with something small. You just got to start with one thing. And that's what I'm asking all of you to do. Start with one thing, one scripture. And this could be the one study this, study it for a week, study it and find out what God has for you in it. But, um, so this woman said, I said, what's, what's your one thing? What's your one thing that's keeping you from being healthy? And she said, I drink soda. I said, oh, 
okay, what kind of soda? Dr. Pepper. For 25 years, this woman has been drinking Dr. Pepper. Oh, God, love her. And I'm like, oh, sister, 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 you've got to get, get Ixnay, that stuff. But it has a hold of her, right? She's been doing it for 25 years, and it's just put on so much weight. And I remember training these people, side note, uh, 20 years ago, and they did the same thing. They would drink two two liter pops a day, and I got them to quit it, and they dropped weight instantly. It was amazing. But of course, it's not all so healthy for you in other ways. Caramel color is not good for you, the sugar. So that's how I had to wake her up and say, hey, you know what? It's in a, is it 12 ounce can of soda or 10? I don't know. It's something about that, but there's 10 teaspoons of sugar in it in a can of soda. So I was having giving her that realization, and she's like, whoa. And so um, I just said, just start with that one thing. Just start with the soda. I said, do you like it for caffeine? No, I like it for taste. You know, figure out what it is and then find something to replace it like she said I said water it's the best thing you can do she is starving of water that means her brain starving of water her body's starving of water I mean right now I feel like I'm starving of water you know because I'm because I need to have a little sip here <laughs> let me have a little quick sip um mm. that's my best buddy two of these a day if not more my other best buddy's right here. Can you see Huck? Yes, he's joined us. Hi, Hucky. Hey, I don't know what you need right now, but but I'm working right now, okay? Working with my late ladies because we're working on being better warriors for Christ. Are you a warrior? Yes, you are. You're a warrior, aren't you? Okay, now go lay down. Okay, so, oh, whoa, buddy. Oh, you got to go outside because you're not feeling good, buddy. Okay, don't really, really puke on my floor. That looked like you're going to puke. Okay, that was disgusting. <laughs> This is my, my moment of evil, right? He's puking on my floor. Just kidding. All right, so stand firm then with a belt of truth buckled around your waist. Okay, I have to wear a belt to keep my pants on, right? To keep my pants up. And so wearing that belt of truth, look for the truth. Seek the truth. Do not believe the first person that says something. Research everything, y'all, and go deeper than your research. Look where the source is. For example, I look on the bottom. Where is this made? Sina with a cha. Okay, no. So I don't really, I look at sources, okay? So definitely research and do that. With the breastplate of righteousness in place and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to this, all of this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. You're going to get arrows. Every day we're going to get flaming arrows. Every single day, whether it's in our minds, whether it's someone that's just, you know, cutting us off in traffic, or it's some kind of bill we get in the mail we didn't expect, something. There's going to be some fire arrow. How are you going to take care of it, warrior? Are you going to put up your shield? Yes, you are. This is how you do it. Come up. Put up the cross right in front of it. Come on, warriors. Put up your cross right in front of it. Block it. Remember Wonder Woman? She would be like this. But no, we're like about the cross. So put up your warrior shield, Okay. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. That is right. That is the word of God. And that's what we're in right now. The word of God. Warriors, get in this and read about this. So who, who started this? Well, guess what? Paul. That's what I was talking about earlier. My husband went from Saul to Paul, but not the real Paul. He's like, I swear, it's like his distant cousin. I mean, they're just so much alike. So Paul wrote a letter to the church in Ephesus in order to give them an in-depth teaching about how to nurture and maintain unity in the church. And just remind yourself, too, we are the church, okay? The church is in us. The the Holy Spirit is living within us. It starts first with us. Um, and then, then obviously the church is the doors of uh, 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 wherever you go and wherever you uh, practice your uh, faith with uh, Jesus. So it was a letter that was written. It was a letter that went circular. And then he basically is put, pointing out certain things that are going to help equip his, um, his, his people, you know, as, as he's traveling and spreading the gospel. And I love the Bible, like I said, that I have right now. I'm going to give you a suggestion of what this Bible is. And you can pick out your own, but I need these. It says maps in it. I mean, it's powerful. And that's what you have to do is study the Bible like you're going back to college. And that's what I've been doing here. It's called the Life Application Study Bible. I'll show you a little. And I have the NIV version. I like different ones. Oh, it's in Grand Rapids, Michigan. That's pretty cool. But this is a picture of it right here. Oh, here we go. Bing, bing, bing. That's the inside of what it is, Okay. And so, if you want to get a copy, and uh, I really, it's really powerful because it gives you a lot of different things in here. Like it breaks down God's armor for us, and it tells me, okay, piece of armor. What is the meaning of is a belt? It's the truth, and that's his application. Well, the devil fights with lies, and sometimes his lies sound like the truth. Ding ding ding. 
Believers have God's truth. However, which can defeat the devil's lies. So when you think it's the truth, you got to measure it. you got to weigh it. Weigh it with God's word. Is it really? And God will equip you. But you've got to have that relationship with him. If you're like, hey, God, um, it's me, uh, Mindy. How you doing? Haven't talked to you in about 10 years. How you doing? Okay, can you sell my house? And can you um, please um, make sure my day is really amazing and um, make sure it doesn't rain because I'm having a party tonight. I mean, hello. No, you can't be like that, okay? So we have to find truth. And then it goes on. It says the breastplate, the shoes, the shield, the helmet, the sword, the spirit. So in the Christian life, we are going to battle against rulers and authorities. We know that. And these are powerful, evil forces of fallen angels that are led by Satan. He's a vicious fighter and he wants to fight and he wants to destroy you. He is the author of destroying. He wants to destroy your life. So we have to depend on God who is going to give us that strength and every piece of armor. He's going to equip you. Isaiah similarly mentions God's armor. If you look up Isaiah 1, or excuse me, Isaiah 11, 5, and then 49, 2, he also does so you can do your own research with this by looking up these the whole body needs to be armored and armed um satan checks for weak spots so if you have any weak spots and that's why i talk about that spirit heart mind and body if you're weak and you're not serving right now basically you might be living a life of me 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 right or maybe your your body's out of shape and you haven't worked out in forever and you're like oh well guess what okay i'm gonna tell you a little mini story too because you know i like to tell you little mini stories, mini stories so um my neighbor i won't mention her name um god love her i love her but um she basically has been very depressed and I have lots of neighbors, so y'all can't pick her out. But anyway, uh, she's been very depressed. And just the past three days, she has been out of that because she started walking again. And uh, I mean, she went out and just started walking and, and being outside. And she came over the other day, and she was less gripey because you know how we are when we're in our moments. We get gripey, and we're whiny, and we're like, Eeyore, and the world isn't right. And we go and tell our friends, and we get ding, ding. Well, anyway, the other day she came over, and she's like, I am so much happier. I, I feel so good. I've been walking. And she's like, I have a depression, and I, I just feel. I don't have it now. It's been lifted. And it has been so powerful to hear that because that really breaks our hearts, you know, when people are stuck in their muck. Um, so this whole body needs to be armed, like we said. And so he's going to check for the weak spots. And that was her weak spot. And now she's out and she's armoring herself by getting healthy again. He knows them all. So Satan knows all your weak spots. He knows, like, for example, um, like mine a long time ago was chocolate and it's not anymore. So na 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 na. But anyway, um, and so he would know my weak spot. He'd be like, oh, this looks really good. Or, ooh, just try this or whatever. He knows your weak spots. So we must help each other and we must stand our ground and resist the enemy until the end of the battle. And when's the end of the battle? Well, when you go and you're with with Jesus in heaven one day or in heaven, right? So really you're in battle all the time. We always are. It's the battle of the mind. It's the battle of the body. It's the battle of the spirit. It's the battle of the heart. It is some kind of battle that you're battling. And so we have got to stay equipped. And that's why I wanted to bring with you today Ephesians 6, 11. Well, it's more than that. 6, 10 through 16 is what I read. The armor of God. All right, warriors, get equipped, be fierce, and stay fierce, okay? And in order to do that, it first starts with prayer and a relationship with God, and it starts with opening up his word. And I, um, we're going to go ahead and go ahead and pray right now. So thank you so much for joining us. Father God, oh, thank you so much for who you are, Lord. Thank you so much for equipping us in our spirit, heart, minds, and bodies, God. And even though we don't feel equipped, Lord, we read today about your armor, your armor that's in Ephesians 6, 11 10 through 16 it's powerful god we just need to put it on and keep it on we don't need to remove it lord we need to sleep in it we need to wake in it we need to be shining it up because god it's been beaten up but lord you can restore it and renew it god just like it reminds me of the movie of wizard of oz and the tin man went in and they all got polished up before they met the wizard and lord as the tin man was getting ironed out because he was made of metal Help us to figure out the ways to wear our armor boldly and bravely, Lord, and beautifully. Help us, God, to shine up a little bit. Because shining up is with you, Lord. It's having that relationship with you, Lord, where you're equipping us and you're pouring into us what we need to receive for our armor, Lord. With the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of, of righteousness, the sword of the Spirit, Lord, the belt of truth, the shoes of peace, God. Oh, Equip us, Lord. Equip us with our full armor, Lord. And help us to walk in the journeys that we have, God. I like to call them journeys. You call them battles. Mandy Man calls them battles. We all call them something. But God, 
We, God, need to stay equipped. And it's the only way we can do that by getting into your word and dissecting it, Lord. Even if it's one scripture, one verse. God, help us to be full of you, Lord. To be filled with you daily, Lord. That we can just be open to what you have for us. That whether it's through a person's word. I mean, maybe it's a criticism. Maybe it's a criticism we're receiving. And God, maybe we're like, oh, wow, I am so offended by what they said. And I'm not going to talk to them ever again. But God, no. Let us open up our hearts to say, mm, is this something I could be receiving? Is this something that could be truth about me? And then Weigh it on your word, Lord. Help us to weigh it on what you have for us, Lord. Not to be selfish and just brush it off and think, oh, that's not me. I'm not that. God, help us to open up our spirit, heart, minds, and bodies to say, maybe there is some kind of truth in what that person is saying to me. And if there's not, Lord, help us to walk in a new way, in a new path. Show us, Lord.